picture about me. So when I was five years old, I loved to play video games, but it was really hurting my eyes. So my mom said that the Wii broke, but I didn't believe her. So we started fighting, <laughs> but my mom won. And she said, this is not the end. You can make your own video games and learn how to code. So I got really good at making video games and I taught at 10 different events, mostly at Maker Faires. You know how teachers have superpowers? Well, each time I taught, I also learned, and that made me Super Code Man! <laughs> because I love video games so much, I was really fascinated by it and wondered what it would feel like to finish all the levels in just one day. Without realizing it, I turned my fear of not playing video games into something really fascinating. Learning and teaching others how to create their own video games. So at my first Maker Fair in Washington, D.C., I met a man called Mr. Patrick at my booth, and he said, what you're doing is great. You're teaching our friends who can see how to code, but what if you taught our blind friends how to code? That would be even more awesome. And I said, I accept the challenge. Bring it on. I'm Super Code Man. <laughs> you know, so sometimes parents are afraid that their kids aren't learning enough for the real world. Well, I'm here to tell you that kids are really fascinated by problem solving. Trust me, that's why we love to play, especially video games, because we get to solve problems all by ourselves, and we get points for that. But sitting in a chair and listening is really boring, and that's why us kids don't really like school so much. <laughs> Most people think that kids are too young to solve problems. Not true. My great-grandpa walked eight miles across the fields just to get to his school when he was only seven, because that was cool and his grandmother learned to read and write on her own because she couldn't go to school. Even cooler, when life doesn't give us fascinating problems, we just create them in video games. But when you give them to us in real life, we will do our best to solve them. So I have a program called Scratch, and it's made by MIT. I tried to solve my problem with it, but my blind friends could not tell what things were on the computer. Then I made a puzzle book called Cody Locks and the Three Bears. It's the story of Goldilocks with code. And there will be missing code pieces that you have to fill in. I thought it worked great for my blind friends, but my blind friends were putting the wrong pieces in the wrong places. I'm Super Code Man. I have a super code idea. How about a 3D board game to teach code? So here's what 3D means. It means that my blind friends can tell and touch what things are. For example, I have a function called touch, and I put a hand symbol, because we use our hands to touch. See? So I'm gonna tell you a little story. It's called Blue versus Magnet. So it's basically where when I closed my eyes and I played my board game, my characters kept falling off. First I thought of glue, but glue is a troublemaker. It would stick things and never come off. Then I thought of magnets. Magnets are lifesavers because they'll stick and come off when you want it to. And that's when I saw my problem, glue versus magnet. So before I set to work on my board, I closed my eyes and I felt a regular board. I couldn't feel anything. Then I felt a cushion. I could feel the little threads on the cushion. That's when I knew that my board game had to be 3D. I put three lines on my board game so that my blind friends could tell that the right pieces were in the right places. So I had three things I could make my board with. One, iron, two, copper, and three, steel. First I tried iron. Iron would not, was not easy to lift, but it would stick. Then I tried copper. Copper was really easy to lift, but it wouldn't stick. Then I tried steel. Steel was really easy to lift and would stick. Then I knew steel works. So I put steel into my board. So I made coding simpler from a computer into 
a puzzle book, and then a 3D board game to teach code. My sweet grandpa helped me cut my board. My very first code blocks were made of cardboard. See, I'm putting little 3D lines on my board game. Then I got some help from Mr. Jeff at the Makerspace. He helped me 3D print my code blocks. Then I got some help from Ms. Rita at the Vision Loss Center. She helped me make a braille coded cheat sheet. See? What I mean by braille coded is I made a little sheet which our blind friends can tell what pieces they'll be using throughout the story. Then I stuck Velcro underneath each code piece so that they'll stick to my code board. Then I made a magnet underneath each character so that they'll stick even when my blind friends play the game. Then I took it to my blind friends to test with. Not only did they love the game, but they also made it better. You know what a maker fair is? It's a magical, wonderful place of learning and creativity. And I took my inventions to six of them. They were nice enough to let me go on stage. I had a boot to teach code to kids. I thought only my blind friends would like my idea because I only designed it for them. But the kids who could see still loved it. And they loved the fact that the board game was 3D. And you know what's really amazing? Even a three-year-old who didn't know how to read made her very first code. So here's the original version of Storybot. What Cody Lux is doing is that she's trying to get to the beds. The code is, first she moves up two steps, one, two. Then she moves left three steps, one, two, three. And then she moves up four steps, one, two, three, four. And then she has an if-then-else condition, where there's a question and there's multiple answers for it. So from here, it's if touching daddy bear's bed, say too hard. Or if touching mommy bear's bed, say too soft. Or if touching baby bear's bed, say just perfect. And then I end the condition and I stop the code. When I took it to the maker fairs, people gave me feedback, like make the board stronger or color my code blocks. So here's the new version of StoryBot. See, I 3D printed my board and I colored my code blocks. Then I took it to my first competition in Chicago called the Young Inventor Challenge. I competed against a lot of smart and cool kids, just like me. I won first place. They got a four foot robot called Mechanoid, G15KS. But that's not all. Then I got to meet my hero, Mr. Steve Harvey, in person on his TV show. Then I designed an app for Wonderama TV, and I got to explain it. So you see, I think problem solving is fun, whether it's in video games or real life. Now I wish our parents and our schools would allow us to do a lot more of it. So in Chicago, I was enjoying hot chocolate when I saw a homeless friend sitting outside in the cold. I felt really sad for him and wondered what it would feel like to have no home, no family, no food, no one to love you, and worst of all, no video games. <sighs> I can't imagine that. Then I knew what I wanted to do. What if I could teach our homeless friends how to code so that they can get a job and then they can buy a home? I really want to change the world with code. Will you help me? Join me at www.littlecodeninja.com. Remember, programming is fun and it is for everyone. You can do anything at any age. You can change any fear into something really amazing, but only if you look at it from the other side with curiosity and fascination. Thank you.